Oh boy. Boy oh boy. Big jump in density. Charade. Charade. Yeah. Agree. What? You said <laughs> Guys, welcome back to another week of blind wine tastings. And the third time that I'm doing this introduction, Welcome to the channel. If you are new to the channel, we're a blind wine review channel. So basically we taste uh, six different wines. We don't know how much they are, what they are. We don't even see the labels. We just see wine in a glass and we'll tell you how much we'd spend and if we'd buy it or not. Of course, we love uh, doing this, but it does come at a cost. The big thing that you can do if you want to support us in any way, shape or form is to hit the like and subscribe button. It genuinely makes a massive difference and a big shout out to Sometimes Always for selecting the wines uh, for us. They continually throw us some amazing curveballs that you'll get to see if you binge watch all the rest of the episodes. And I am interested to know if you guys have any Genesis wines or Genesis wine stories. And what that is, is for me and for many of the wine industry, we often have one wine where we taste it and everything just clicks. For me, it was a 1990 bottle of uh, Veuve Clicquot Le Grand Dame in Champagne. What was the wine that got you into wine? Goddamn wines, love you. It's another day, number six. Let's get to it. This week's sponsored by Cowboy Big Boy Energy. Number one, pale red wine. Looks gorgeous. You know, nice kind of see-through thing. You now got some nice faded rim. Not too, not too filtered, not too nothing rather. Looks quite, looks quite lovely. Little bit of barnyard funk, little bit of strawberry, like earthy strawberry. Not really hinting at variety, like it could well be like a really, really young Grenache, maybe. Yeah, there's this certain like element of, I think it just might be alcoholic beverages. Like, you know how like soft drinks taste just super fruity and super yummy and there's no like downside to them other than like diabetes. With this, it's just like, there's booze in there, which gives it that sort of like little kick to it. Um. Uh, yeah, like it's one of those wines where it's like, it's got all the components for it to be really, really delicious and interesting wine. It's got some good structural components. It's really nice and bright and juicy. It's chillable, it's fun, but it just lacks intensity everywhere. Like it is such a um, put together, pieced well wine, but it's just like, it's lacking intense, intensity on the nose. It's lacking intensity on the palate. It's just here for a good time and a long time in, in more ways than one. Uh, all right, moving on to wine number two. <laughs> uh, we have what is like, this is when I look at really fine rosé. This is exactly what I want to be seeing. And knowing this show and the curveballs that we get from Sometimes Always, I'm going to say that this is probably like Pinot Gris. So it's quite floral and quite sort of like off dry to a certain degree. Thinking potentially rosé. Oh, I mean, like you just want rosé to be like this. This is what people try to make rosé be like. Oh, wow. It's got more intensity and flavor than I expected. This is fucking cracking. This is an excellent wine. Holy shit. It's got a lusciousness, almost like a, a, a milk and honey type effect to the palate. It's not sweet, it's a, it's a bone dry wine. It just has a lot of fruit density and a lot of fruit weight that has the appearance of sweetness or appearance of sweetness. I'm gonna stick with rosé. It's dry, there's a little bit of berry in there, but there is also a little bit of like, now this sounds harsh but like garbage water ending to it. You know what I mean? Like just sort of a little bit of uh, organic, not like not like bad garbage water, but just sort of like when you've made dinner two nights in a row and you lift up the compost bin and something drips off the bottom and you're like, ugh. I, like, it's one of those ones that we shouldn't like really talk about on the show because it's not, rosé should not be like thought about and you know, considered in like all of this, like, you know, uh, in a drinking aspect. As far as winemaking thing, you should be trying to make the most meticulously perfectly crafted rosé. And whoever made this absolutely did that. But if we're drinking it, it's for, it's for sheer enjoyment. It's for sheer pleasure. And that's exactly the kind of vibe I'm getting from this wine. It is cracking. Love this wine. Absolutely love this wine. Four, three. One number three. Yep. If this was a Frank Ocean album, it would be Blonde, not Pyramids. Uh, is Pyramids even an album? It might have been an EP. Anyway, it's gold colour is the point. It's showing next to nothing aromatically. I literally can't smell anything. I have no idea what this is. Is this lemon juice? Is this just water with lemon in it? Medium acid, um, really nice fleshy texture. Again, Pinot Gris, Suave, that sort of Garganaga-esque. It could be like Arnace, to be honest. <gasps> could be Aligote. That is soft, that's interesting. It's got like a, it's got like a hazelnuttiness to it. It's like a, uh, my five bucks out, we're going Aligote. Yeah, baby. I, I love the minerality to the wine, but there's no flavor alongside it. I'm gonna grab two bottles at 20 bucks. I hope it's 20 bucks, I hope it's cheap, because if it is cheap, I'll probably grab more than two bottles, I'll probably add six, because it's just one of those wines you just wanna give to people, and it's like, here's a glass of wine. 
There you go, lucky this is for you. How much am I going to pay for it? Well, I've got, I'm going to have five bucks to spend. Um, no, I reckon it's 50 bucks. Not my favourite, but cool nuttiness to it. Anyway. Now, that's a really dense wine. That's like soup. I can't see, I can't see through it at all. Like that is, that is dark wine. It smells like a really nice leather couch, but not, the thing is like you say something like that and then someone smells and they're like, that doesn't smell exactly like a leather couch. I know. I know it doesn't smell exactly like a leather couch. I'm trying to make comparisons here, folks. Like, there's only so many things that you can smell like. Um, That's world-class Cabernet. That is apex Cab. If it's from Australia, hats off. If it's from anywhere else, hats off. The cool thing about Cab Franc is that it has such a width and breadth of style. So we've got a lot of these sort of Loire-based Cab Francs that can be really light, almost Pinot-esque. And then you've got these, these dense motherfuckers of a wine which I actually really quite find, I find really appealing. Anyway, Shiraz, uh, three bottles, so I can age them for a little while and see if anything changes, and I'll pay 35 bucks for it. Hope it's not too spent on that one, because you'll spend your money elsewhere. Number five, turbid light red. Lots of haze, lots of filtration. Let's hope this is cheap this week. Okay, this is weird. It smells like a white wine. It smells exactly like a white, it's honeyed. If you put this in a black glass, like an opaque glass, then I would totally guess this is a white wine. It's got white wine in it. It's got, I reckon that is a Grenache Pinot Gris Chardonnay blend. Wow. Oh my God, that's so much fun. Fuck anything else. That, that's just so much, so much fun. Like it's just, whereas the last wine was all about this finesse, this really perfectly articulated and thought through wine. This is just, put everything together to make a wine that's just, sheer enjoyment across the board. God damn, I would drink this by the pint. Um, yeah, right. It's a cool wine, like it's really interesting drinking. It has this weird honey thing that flows onto the palate as well, like a diacetyl effect. Don't know what this is. I think this is just a, a complete sort of mozza of different varieties that has probably been um, thrown together, um, drained off maybe. I, I would say it's probably a red-white blend and a white dominant blend at that. That's probably been matured in a barrel, batonage the crap out of and pushed through malolactic fermentation and this is the result. Bright, it's vibrant. It's got a nice little tang to it. I'll have, it's probably my favorite so far, but it's not 12, it's nine. I'll have nine of it and I reckon it's gonna be 28 bucks, which is a rarely seen price on the show, but that makes it all the more exciting when you get it right. And finally, let's finish up on a medium bodied red with a light bricky hue and a faded rim. It could be a bunch of different things. The color's lovely, there's no doubt about that. All of the other wines that we've just tried are a prelude to this wine. This wine is fucking bonkers. Firstly, color. Dense, dark, you know, not unlike any other red wine that you really see, right? Um, it's got really nice clarity, but this sort of faded rim, which for me actually indicates quite often that we haven't actually seen um, like a lot of forced filtration. We're seeing natural settling. That's cool. I reckon it's a Pinot. Uh, it's got that sort of like sour raspberry tartness to it, which I'm really into. Uh, I wonder how many people wearing cowboy hats have done blind wine tastings before, hey? Brilliant Pinot. Absolutely brilliant Pinot. That lovely, beautifully framing tannin is just like so lithe and fine and just so like elegantly powdery and the fruit flavor is just pure and gorgeous. That's gnarly. That could be one of my favorite, favorite ones. There's a bit of oak, not too much. That's the thing with Pinot. There's always a little bit of something, but not too much. Everything's tailored. There's there's a little bit of whole bunch work, but not too much. The, the primary fruit is still protected. Yeah, one of the lineup. 12, Pinot, 40 bucks, yeah. Save a horse, ride a cowboy. Cool, we are good to go, guys. Welcome back. Varying sort of uh, quantities left in the glasses here, so mm -hmm. I'm saying some are winners and some are losers. Not necessarily true. I think you know, like something like this one, it was more just like I was, I was searching to find flavour. Everything else was like you know, a lot of the wines were very glaringly obvious where like what they were. So mm -hmm. it was just like, yeah, cool, I get mm -hmm. this. It's amazing. Off we go next to the next one. I, I, I have a spend more time. Was there one utter banger in here? There was four utter bangers in Ooh, here. Oh, okay. There was okay. one in here for me. It was... but, but I want to talk about wine. I want. What do you about? Group message yesterday, let's all wear cowboy hats, right? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm here looking like a fucking asshole. Anyway, wine's nice, but we failed. Also, uh, I owe you guys $5.
Oh, I owe you five dollars. What are they? Ah, that. Ah, <laughs> ah. We could be on there. I pulled the Elegote button. Did I pull the Elegote yeah, button? Well, I'll tell you what. Here we yeah. go. Here we go, boys. Um, actually, I've got five bucks in my pocket. I'm gonna put that right under here. If it's, um, <laughs> you guys can decide what to do. If it's either Elegote or Grenache. Uh, right. one on one. All right, one on one. I thought was stunning. I thought it was fantastic, awesome, juicy. I'm not too sure what it was. I thought potentially Pinot. I thought but... I thought Yarra Valley Pinot. Uh, yep. My my main thing of it is just like it was structurally sound. It had all the flavors that you want from this style of wine. It just lacked oomph. It wasn't aromatically mm. intense. It yep. wasn't palate intense. But everything else, bang on. Bought twelve and I spent sixty bucks on it. Six for thirty-five. But... How much was it? Whoa! Oh, oh, good Very value. Good. good value. What do we got? In Oh, in dreams. So this is when we had like the Chardonnay, the Chardonnay. that blew our minds the other yeah, week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pinot, by the way, it is. Hey, oh, he gets it. He gets it. Um, he gets it. Cowboy hat. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> lady. We had the Chardonnay. We absolutely loved it because of the great value that it provided, and this does pretty much the exact same thing. Cool I'm one. pretty sure on their Chardonnay as well. I said I'd pay sixty bucks a bottle for it and get twelve. So you're just saying this is the best value Yarra producer in the country? One number two. Holy fuck, this is a perfect rosé. Or a perfect Pinot Gris. Either which way. It's one of the two. I had... I only wanted three of them. What? Not because... No, it, no, no, the no, perfect no. rosé? I know, I know. It is the perfect rosé. It's just for some reason, I was just like, I, I don't need to have more than three. Cool. That's just me. Uh, I wanted 12 at 30 bucks. I wanted, I wanted six at 38. What are we at? Hey, nice. that's okay. it. Rosé of the summer. I would never have guessed Pinot. We've no had, gray, just Pinot. We've had their actual Pinot before and it's stonkingly good. Again, very another good. really good value number. Um, so, so far, you are very correct. There are at least two Pinots in this lineup, but now there's definitely three. Yeah, there's 100% three. 100% three. Uh, All right, moving awesome on to- Awesome wine. Awesome rosé. Uh, what is 100% what, okay. Alagote. It has uh, to be Alagote. I'm going to say Alagote in this. I first so. go, it was like first hazel nutty and stuff. That's I don't know. Basically, if I don't know what the variety is, I'm guessing other go day, and I'm gonna keep burning cash till I win this kitty. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope you guys send me five bucks. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, You're I, the only one with money on the table right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, I put. Uh, I I said suave. Um, yeah, we said it's just it's so neutral. There's like there's no aromats here. There's little to no flavor. The minerality is excellent. Other than that, it's, it's very boring. I went suave, grigio. Fuck it, Alagote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just went fuck it, Alagote. <laughs> All right, so I uh, said I would buy three bottles at 28. I said two for 20. I said three for 50. Oops, cheap, cool. you can't cheap. get Alagote that cheap. No, nah, we just, yeah. we just, this is just five, five bucks. Five bucks to win. Yeah. Pinot Pinot Gris. Gris. Hey. You should have stuck my, my gut. We go, you guys owe me five bucks. It's called Continental nah, it's Platter. In... <laughs> <laughs> sure is. <laughs> fuck yeah. I love it. Uh, so Mornington Pinot Grigio. Days on skins, really? Don't believe it. Uh, and six months mm. nap and stainless, yeah, that checks out. Uh, slip, slop, slap, and salute is what these guys sometimes always say. And I'd have to agree, it is a summertime like beach wine. Like it's like I would skins, 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 none, none. none. Look at the color yeah. of it. Not a chance. Like, uh, wine number four. Oh boy, boy, oh boy. Big jump in density from Shiraz. Yeah. Three. What? You said Shiraz? For this, yeah. Uh, I said Cabernet. Yeah, 100%. Okay, well, they occupy very similar spaces in my head. Uh, I want a 12, I wanted 12 at 70 bucks. 12 at 60. 3 at 35. 58. Ooh, okay. fucking Shiraz, you good thing. Come Not on. a chance. There it is. Cabernet. Fuck yeah. Um, a high order. So well this, done. This is uh, Joshua Cooper. Now, it's great to see that because there's been a couple of times on the show that we've not liked the wines and yeah. they've been show, showcasing well, no, some so, weird things. So there was one time where we tried the wine early on, like so really right. early. And then we saw the same wine later yeah. or and a different, a different we saw vintage. this. We saw this different vintage of the same wine and we loved it. Uh, this is bonkers. And this is outstanding. So. Fruit salad. You weren't into <laughs> this? Me. Nah, I wasn't into this. It was it was like so much fun. Yeah. It was know, so much fun. I just don't know how I drink it, where I drink it, why I drink it. I can't place it. If I was thirsty, I bought it for 25 bucks. Uh, I couldn't tw place it. 12 at the magic number. 38. I had nine for 28. Oh! Oh! I swear to God, if this is good ash Pinot Gris Chardonnay, this might be the best one ever. Tidy Town! That's a sick Hell one. Put yeah. that on a fucking well, tote bag yesterday. Be. Lambrusco! <laughs> what? Fuck yeah! So this is uh, from the Little Brunswick Wine Co. We've had his wines in the show. We had his at you. Um, Giallo the other week. Oh, yeah, 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 which is also, awesome. yeah, we loved um, it. And also, yeah, Lambrusco, a variety not seen much in Australia, planted by the wonderful people at Chalmers family. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah well done. Um, and yeah, this made 11.3%, so low on alcohol. Chill it down, drink it quickly. 
go to a park, play some hacky sack. That's what that was. Is. If that was pet nap, I'd oh be my all god, over yeah, I'd be all yeah. over his pet nap. I struggled to pick one of the week because I loved this so much. Yeah. I loved this so much. Yeah. But this is fucking excellent. Yes, it's good this bonkers. is fucking excellent. This is bonkers. Like everything about it speaks to a quality Pinot V. Mate, first when you smell it, but it was yeah. the reference of the the actual visual in the glass. Mm -hmm. It looks way too dense to be Pinot. Till you smell it and you're like, oh shit, if it looks it's that so dense and it's Pinot, vibrant. we're oh. talking about like proper ripeness. We're talking about meticulous handling. I've gone straight to 125 and 12. I think it's one of the better wines that we've seen on the show just in general. I'd have to say I agree with you. Um, 12 bottles, $70 for me. Yeah, $12.40 because I'm not good at this. But yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> it's great shit. Wow. Fuck me. Fuck. This is That's amazingly good value. Good value. Wow. Yes! I've been saying this for ages. Marco Lubiana, he is releasing bangers. Yes. Wow. Yes, I've Lucille. had a previous vintage of this and it was remarkable. I couldn't fathom how it got to that price point. This is insane. Um, but I love in his little synopsis from Sometimes Always, it says, with a degree in enology and viticulture, he's not messing around. That's literally what he's got to date. Like that's, he's like 24 years old. Yeah. Oh wow. And he's got himself his degree. That's the most amount of accolades that he's got. Producing something that resembles Grand Cru Pinot Noir. Uh, my housemate was talking what? about like he's gonna buy himself a nice bottle of wine for Christmas. Ren. Oh, bro, get that yeah, one. 100%. Dude, this would be so God. good on Christmas Day. Yeah. Fuck this is bonkers. St Cabernet. Stunningly good, too. Like, that's that was in delicious. insanely good value. value. Like, this is like party a party rose all day. That's also And then juice. we're gonna have a fucking good time with yeah, that. And this is an Aligote. I can't believe it's not Aligote. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're gonna have to start a pot now. Yeah, you guys owe 10 bucks in the pot. We'll yeah, 10 bucks here. in the pot. Uh, guys, shit. thanks so much for chiming in this week. We will be here until next week. <laughs>